So again, I'll double click on the dark gray area and I'm gonna to navigate to the area on my computer where that file is stored. Here he is, and we'll open him up. So now he's opened up in Photoshop. A nice little tip is if you hit Control zero, it automatically zooms the image in to fit the full extent of the window. So we're gonna start now with our basic workflow. In this case, uh, we're gonna walk through a few steps and uh, that will form the, the fundamental part of your, of your Adobe Photoshop workflow. So the first thing we're gonna do is come up to Image, Adjust, Levels. And this is, may seem redundant in that we've already dealt with exposure in our raw image, but it's a good time to check in with our levels here. Um, again, holding down the Alt key and clicking on the white slider, so that's the one on the far right here, I can see that there's no areas being blown out. If I start zooming in, or I should say moving to the left, you'll see the areas that would get blown out, but that would be undesirable. But I might, I might brighten things up a little bit by moving from 255 to 250 in this case. The next thing I'm going to do is check my black level. So again, clicking on the black slider, the one that's on the far left, holding down Alt, shows me that there's no black areas being clipped. So I might slide the black slider just until I start to see a few areas and then back it off a little bit. Something like that. Let's preview that. And we see that what we've really done here is added some contrast. We've made the whites a bit whiter, we've made the blacks a bit blacker, and overall we've added a bit of contrast to the image. But it looks actually a little bit too much in some of the dark areas. So this is the time now to adjust the midpoints. So if I bring the slider to the left, I actually brighten up, open up those shadows just a little bit. Maybe something like that. A, sl a subtle change, but one worth making. And go ahead and say OK. Okay, so once we're done our levels adjustments, the next set of adjustments we're going to run is our shadows and highlights adjustment. So if I come up here to image, adjustments, shadows and highlights, you'll see this dialog box that opens up. Actually, if you've never used this tool, the way it's going to open up is like this, and it's going to be set much more aggressively than I have it set. So what I would recommend doing is to say show more options and to make these settings a lot more subtle. Actually, these bottom four I have at zero, and then my numbers are 15, 10, 35, 15, 10, 30. Some variant of that will work just well, just fine for you. So what we're doing here is the shadows is opening up the shadow detail. It's making the darkest parts of the image a little bit brighter. And the highlights is taking the brightest parts of the image and making them a little bit darker. So in this case, what we're doing is darkening the highlight areas here in his plumage, maybe a little bit into his legs. and that's with the highlights, and with the shadows, we're brightening up these parts of his wing. So you'll play around mostly with the amount, uh, the first slider under each of the tools, shadows and highlights, until you get something that looks about right. You can use the preview to preview that. So let's go ahead and say that we're happy with that. The next tool we're gonna use is the hue and saturation tool. Now you might think that it's a little bit redundant in that we've already dealt with hue and saturation when we converted the raw file, which is true in some ways, but sometimes it's good to just go back and check in, and also Photoshop allows us to do things a little bit more selectively. So the first thing I'll do is select the saturation tab here, and again, I'll just click on it and use my up and down arrows on the keyboard to add a desired amount of saturation. Now let's say that I was happy with that, but that I thought I've added a little bit too much saturation to the red areas here on his head. I could go ahead here and change this from master to reds, but a nicer way to do it, if you have Photoshop, I believe it was introduced in CS3, perhaps in CS4, is to select this tool down in the corner here. Then you click on the color area that you're interested in and hold down the left click. And if I move it to the right, it adds saturation and move it to the left, it takes it away. So it's a really intuitive little way to fine tune your colors. So overall, I'm pretty happy here. I'm going to go ahead and say OK and move on to my last adjustment, which is the Image Adjust Brightness Contrast. Now, I like to check in with contrast just at the last stage of my workflow. I find that I tend to process my images to be a little bit on the uh, non-contrasty side. So it's, it's a nice final check-in just to click on contrast. Again, use your arrow keys and maybe add just a little bit of contrast, as much as you think it's needed. I like using the arrow keys here on the keyboard because rather than be focused so much on the number here and how, 
how am I sliding the slider? I can look at the image itself and just use the up and down arrows. So I'll go ahead and say OK there. Now, we could be done here. We could just go ahead and save this file. But sometimes there's a little bit of noise in the background, um, which can be undesirable. And to remove that noise, what I like to do is select the background only, then refine the edge of the selection, and then filter the noise. So I'll go ahead and do that now. The way to select the background, the easiest way, tends to be to use the magic wand tool, which is over here in our toolbar, and it's the fourth tool down. So if I click on that, if I click, let's say here somewhere in the blue, you'll see that it selects very similar color tones. Now if I hold down shift, I can keep adding to my selection. If you want to go one step further, you can even come up here to the top left corner and select the second box in here, which is to, the default will be to add to your selection. So rather than having to hold down shift, every time you just click, you can add to your selection. So you can just click through the image, adding all the background in until you're reasonably happy with your selection. Don't forget about going in between the bird's legs, subject's legs. There we go, something like that. Now I'll zoom in just so we can see a little bit more about what's going on here. So we've selected the background. Now we want to refine the edge and that tool is located up here in the top of the screen. Anytime you're on one of the selection tools it'll be there. So I'll go ahead and click on that and what this does is rather than have the filter be applied totally here and then a hard line and not at all here it gives us a little gra graduated effect. So if I, if I say here for example feather this selection quite aggressively you're gonna see in a second once it previews that there's a transition to the zone. That would be too much but you'll adjust these settings to your taste. I find that something around 5, 5, 5, 5, minus 5 is a good starting point. So in this case, I'll go ahead and say OK. Then I'm going to go Filter, Noise, Reduce Noise, and adjust my settings here. Now because we're dealing with the background and not the image itself, not the bird itself or the subject itself, I'm not really concerned with preserving any details or sharpening any details. What I am concerned with is removing the noise from the background. So I'm going to set my strength quite aggressively at 9 and my color noise at 45% and go ahead and say OK. That'll just take a second for that filter to run. And at this point I'll just zoom back out. Well there you have it, that's basically our finished product. Now at this point in the workflow we could go ahead and reduce the size of this image, put a background on it and save it for example as a JPEG so that we could load it maybe to our website, maybe to Flickr, maybe post it on one of the nature photography websites. Um, but in this case you know we're happy with this one, we're just going to go ahead and close the image down. Well there you have it folks, a basic workflow in Adobe Photoshop. I hope you found that useful and entertaining. And I hope you'll tune into my website, www.glenbartley.com. There's lots of photos, articles, and more videos to come. And by all means, check out the workshops that I run on the Workshops tab. We'll be visiting exciting destinations like Ecuador, Costa Rica, Churchill, Vancouver Island, and more. Thanks for watching.